Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God, and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. And now let us recite together the second form of the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us, and your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. My eyes are ever upon the Lord, who frees my feet from the snare. Alleluia. Look upon me, have pity on me, for I am alone and afflicted. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Lord Jesus, you accompanied your sorrowing disciples as they journeyed to Emmaus. Go with us on our journey through this world. Guide us, uphold us, and make our hearts burn within us. May we walk in the strength of your presence all of our days. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the third Sunday of Easter, the first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let it, this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds wonders and signs which God worked through him in your midst as you yourselves know this man delivered up by the set plan and the foreknowledge of God you killed using lawless men to crucify him but God raised him up releasing him from the throes of death because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with the joy of your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David, that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in the midst to this day. But since he was a prophet, and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon the throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial for today is, Lord, you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Lord, you will show us the path of life. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart extorts me. I set my Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you will show us 
the path of life. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path of life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Lord, you will show us the path of life. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's work, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it was now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astonished us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described.
but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe! All the prophets had spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? While he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us, so they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread, the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning to all of you. Peace and blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ to rest upon you and all your loved ones. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, and how he was explaining the scripture to us? Words taken from today's gospel according to St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Of the many appearances of Jesus following his resurrection, today's gospel talks of the two disciples who were traveling from Jerusalem to the town of Emmaus on that first Easter day. We know the name of one of those disciples. His name was Cleopas. His wife Mary, as recorded in the Gospel of St. John, was one of the women who went back to the tomb that Easter morning to finish the anointing of Jesus. Those two disciples traveling on the road to Emmaus must have had a lot of different emotions. They must have felt deep sadness and personal fear, recalling what happened on Good Friday. They probably had a cautious optimism after being told by the women that they found Jesus' tomb open. And finally, they must have been somewhat amazed, but also somewhat doubtful, when they were told by the women that they had seen angels who told them that Jesus was alive. And so now Jesus appears on that same road and as a fellow traveler, and he asks them what they're talking about. The gospel states that they did not recognize Jesus. But as they continued on the road, the two disciples became enlightened by the knowledge of the stranger who unfolded scripture to them 
about why it was necessary for the Christ to suffer. They were so moved by their conversation that they invited the stranger to stay with them that evening. In the end, after having supper and with the breaking of bread, their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus. And just as he first appeared to them on that road, he vanished from them. Scripture tells us that they return the same hour back unto Jerusalem. I would bet that it did not take them that long, and that they probably set a record walking back to Jerusalem. For now, instead of fear and sadness, they were filled with joy and excitement, and instead of having doubt, there was belief. They wanted to share with others what had just happened to them. What would they say to the others? Would the others believe their story? But whether or not the others would believe, it was important that they believed. It is said that we are all on separate paths in our lives and on our paths, we meet others, some who travel with us, but for a while, and others who stay with us as family and lifelong friends. I have said that everyone we meet in life, on our path, is a teacher to some degree, for we will all learn something from those we meet, whether it be good or bad. And it is through these interactions that our personalities are molded, and it is through these interactions that we grow in insight. Through the years of my life, I have spoken with many who experienced the Lord coming onto their paths and into their lives whether it be in church or having a personal religious experience outside of church, when it happens, we know that it is real and we know that He is real. In our present situation of isolation due to the coronavirus, we are not spending as much time externally shopping the malls, visiting restaurants, or gathering with friends and neighbors. So many of us have become solitary and left to our own thoughts. I am sure that many of the doctors and nurses, the first responders, the paramedics, the healthcare workers are all experiencing a degree of inner solitude after working 12, 16 hours caring for strangers who are sick and who are dying. And there are so many others that we talk little about. Those who work in the supermarket as cashiers and those who stock the shelves, those who provide the basic elements of our everyday life, electricity, running water, as well as those who deliver our mail and pick up our trash. And finally, there are so many more for whom we keep in prayer today, those who are without a job, those that are struggling to put food on the table, all struggling and trying to find a ray of sunshine for themselves and for their families all who need the in, inner assurance that they are not alone. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, the story of the two disciples who met the Lord on the road to Emmaus brings all of us to a great truth, that as a people, as a society, we need others for moral support, 
for inner strength to help get through these most difficult times. And so it is in the words of Jesus, and lo, I am with you always, that we find that we are not alone. It is in our faith and belief that we, even but for a moment, find the moral support and inner strength to carry on. May we walk in faith with the Lord daily, seeking strength and guidance on the path of our life. And may we all see the Christ in all that we come in contact with, and following his directives, may we truly be his disciples by being Christ unto others. All those we come in contact on our roads of life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia. Receive, Father Almighty and Eternal God, this Immaculate Host, which I, your unworthy servant, offer to you, my living and true God, for my countless offenses and omissions, for all present here, for our nation as well as for all faithful Christians living and dead, and for all humanity, may be for all of us a means to salvation and everlasting life. Amen. Lord God, you endued us with great dignity and worthiness. Through Jesus Christ, you exalted, renewed, and sanctified us. Through the mingling of this wine and water, may we worthily partake of this holy oblation, in which our Savior gives himself as food for the world, and in deepest truth, unites himself with us.
we offer you, Lord, the cup of salvation. In your mercy, look upon your faithful people and accept a sublation of praise, petition, and adoration for our salvation and for that of the whole world. Amen. O Lord, receive us who bow before you in contrition and humility and grant that the sacrifice be so offered in your sight as to be pleasing to you, Lord God. Come, sanctifier, almighty, eternal God, and bless the sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Sweep me not away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, men in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, you instilled a vibrant hope in us through the resurrection of your Son from the dead. Through the gifts of this altar, may we, being raised with him, seek those things which are above and be made partakers of eternal life. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your whore hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right and just so to do. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Especially at this time when he became our Paschal sacrifice, he is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death, he conquered death for us, and by his wondrous resurrection, he restored eternal life to us. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating, unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. We pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the homeless and the unemployed, for all those who are alone this day. We pray for the doctors and nurses, the first responders, the, and the health care workers. And all those, dear Lord, for whom they help one another. And we also offer to you, O Lord, all those who are devoted to you and for those who offer who offer up to you the sacrifice and praise for themselves and their own for the hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you the living eternal and true god we join in communion with an honor above all others the memory of mary the glorious virgin mother of our lord and god jesus christ also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which for you and for many shall be shed unto the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, 
do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty of your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice, an immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar and to the presence of your divine majesty that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example. We say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. 
May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not because for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, what I have received unto our lips, may I understand. And may my heart and mind and this temporal gift become for me an everlasting healing. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood, which I have drawn, cling to my innermost being, and grant that no sin remain in me, whom these holy sacraments have nourished, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
the cup of blessing that we bless is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Alleluia. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray, Lord Jesus Christ, you made yourself known to your disciples in the breaking of bread at Emmaus. May we, who through the same blessed sacrament come to know you and abide with you forever. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lo, the sacrifice has been offered. Alleluia, alleluia, ha, ha, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the tribute of my worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel. According to St. John, glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him, him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man who is coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we have seen his glory the glory of an only son coming from the Father filled with enduring love thanks be to God my dear brothers and sisters let us conclude today's service with a prayer that we offer for all those who in harm's way are aiding and helping their fellow man, to the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, the healthcare workers, and all those who give a part of themselves unto others as our blessed Lord taught us. May God be with you, and may God watch over all of you and your loved ones with health and peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for all the faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.